We are going to start this video by taking a look at an oil leak that's pre existence 25,000 miles ago. We currently have 156,912 miles. Let's take a look at that leak. So, when we see here on the floor, you can see all this oil. All this oil, especially right here, you notice a little pink that's coming from the power steering seal. That's the power steering gearbox seal. So now we have to remove this pitman arm and release the power steering gearbox from its frame rail so we could replace this seal inside here to stop the leak. So we could gain access down to the power steering gearbox down here. We have to remove the power steering gearbox to replace that seal because to remove this cover that has four bolts it's going to become impossible when it comes time to lift it up and detach it because it's going to touch the body of the vehicle. Let's begin our repair. What you need to know about this oil leaking from this power steering gearbox seal is that it's going to become damaging to other parts like the CV joint axle boot, all the rubber bushing for the control arms because when you're driving this oil it's going to spray itself onto the suspension as you can see how the suspension look moist with oil and that oil will cause damage to other rubber component so we must replace this seal because the oil will continue to damage rubber bushing the rubber boot for the ball joint the CV axle boot will become softened by the oil and eventually will crack and split and the grease will come out of the boot causing damage to the axle. So the first thing we want to do before we could remove the steering, hydraulic steering gearbox is we want to remove this pitman arm from its gearbox shaft and the center link. So the socket that you're going to need to remove this nut is an inch and five eighths. And unfortunately it's a three quarter inch drive. So we're going to need a three quarter inch drive to a half inch adapter. And then we're going to have to place this in our socket. The next thing we're going to need is our breaker bar. You do not want to use a ratchet for releasing this nut because you might most likely destroy the ratchet mechanism. put some grease on the thread of the tool to ease the pressure that's required to turn it. So we have released the arm from the Pitman arm shaft and that's what we want. So now what we have to do is to get this part detached from the center link and like I said before we're going to use a hammer the tap on the pitman arm itself and it will release itself from the ball joint. We don't want to use a tool that will go between the pitman arm and the joint itself because during the process of hammering that tool to split this joint it's going to damage this rubber boot. So what we have to do now is continuously impact on this area until it releases itself from this ball joint. This could have been done before we released the nut for the pitman arm steering shaft. So we have our arm removed and we must remember our index point with the shaft. This we want to pay careful inspection to. We want to make sure it has no crack and it's not twisted. Now we could proceed to removing the steering wheel shaft from this steering box. We are now going to get ready to remove the driver side front wheel and before we can do so we must apply the emergency brake so the rear wheel could remain locked and prevent the vehicle from rolling forward. We must also 
place some form of wheel chocks to the passenger side front wheel. This will be the right front wheel. This will also help us to prevent the vehicle from rolling forward. Once the tire has been removed by securing the vehicle and jacking it on its frame rail, you're going to want to place the tire under the vehicle itself in the event that the vehicle should fall to the ground the tire will have some form of security to preventing the vehicle from crushing your leg or your body when you're under the vehicle working if that should be you also want to make sure you replace your wheel lug onto the studs now it is very important where you're going to place your jack stand this is our jack stand and we want to place this jack stand onto the floor directly, nothing in between, bracing itself against the frame rail. In this event, I have placed the jack stand against the frame rail where it extends down onto the lower control arm because that is the height, the maximum height of the jack stand. So let's talk about cleanliness and safety. Before you perform any work under any vehicle, you want to make sure you take the vehicle to a car wash or have the undercarriage pressure wash. This is going to alleviate any dirt and grease that may build up on the surface, easing your work tension. Well, here we can see we have a broken axle boot and you could go to the video link in this video description to see how to replace this axle you don't necessarily need to replace the axle you just need to remove the axle to replace this axle boot with the vehicle securely placed onto the jack stand and the jack off the bottom of the vehicle we are now going to begin to expose the area of the steering box so we could gain access to its bolt for removal. So this is the unit that we want to remove. This whole complete golden assembly. It's not golden, but this is all the loom from off-roading. Our next step is to detach this shaft that goes to the steering wheel by releasing its nut. And then we have to take apart the high pressure line, which is the small one and the low pressure line, which is the larger one. These lines are gonna require a line wrench for removal. But first, we wanna use some of our CRC power lube to protect the threads on the nut when they're gonna be removed. You see, it's very important that you use the CRC because what it does, it's gonna soak into the crevices or the treads and it's gonna make removal easy. If we were to remove these parts, these nuts and fitting dry, what will end up happening is that it's going to grind against the treads and it's going to cause damage to the thread. So it's always important that you use some form of lube on the nut and bolts when you're going to be removing and installing. We also want to place some lube onto these 10 millimeter nut that anchors this ABS cable position because when we have these four not removed this box is going to have to come out this way so we don't want to damage the ABS cable and its bracket. Using a 10 millimeter socket with a quarter inch drive I'm going to remove the ABS bracket So these are machine threads. Normally on some vehicle you will find these to be a screw type thread or a self-tapping thread. So this is a machine thread. We have to be careful when we're installing it. We don't want to strip or cross thread the bolt when we're going to be installing. So we're just going to move this to the side. For now, then we're going to use our 12 millimeter combination wrench. Then we're going to use another one for leverage. We're just going to hook it on to the end. 
this is gonna untighten the bolt for us. So you might be asking yourself, what position does he have the wheel, the steering wheel in? Well, the steering wheel is in a straight forward position with both wheel pointing in a straight forward direction. So this is not something we're going to have to mark, but you could also do so with a paint. Sometimes the paint will get removed. But once you have your center link and pitman arm set, to the mark that we made this will be this shaft will be re reinstalled according to the steering wheel straightness or should I say according to the wheel how it balance you know sometimes you have the wheel will place in the horizontal position but we're gonna take a look at that when we're gonna be reinstalling this shaft so this can be easy to remove if you have a socket with a long extension and a ratchet from above under the hood. So this is the reason why I always use the power loop because you can get your fingers to turn the nut instead of you having to use the wrench all the time and you can notice how the threads are saturated with lube this is what we want if the thread wasn't saturated the threads will sometimes just destroy itself during the process of removal before we can slide this shaft off the steering box there's one more thing that we have to do and that is to release this nut on the steering shaft so when we look down the steering shaft down here, see that nut? We have to release that nut. So this shaft here could slide back off the steering gearbox. This bolt is gonna require a 12 millimeter socket and a extra long extension that will allow your ratchet to be up here for turning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 3 8 ratchet with a 12 millimeter six point short socket and this pipe this pipe is going to help me gain some leverage because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this ratchet and I'm just going to slide it into the end of the pipe then it's going to be able to get me down there onto that nut so we can remove it but when we take a look at the position of the nut you can see it's pointing up to the top so I want to turn that shaft 90 degree to the right and then I'll be able to get my ratchet and socket on the side to remove it so let's take a look at the current position of the steering wheel this is the current position of the steering wheel when we start the removal process of the power steering gearbox what I want to do now with the key remove from the ignition lock, I just want to turn this steering wheel to that position. Now it's going to become lock by the steering wheel locking mechanism inside the steering column. This position is going to place the nut, or should I say the bolt, on the steering shaft to the side so we could get the ratchet on for removal. Now when we take a look at the shaft, we can see that the nut, the bolt itself is on the right hand side of the shaft. This is going to allow me to get my, my tool onto the bolt so I could turn it off. This is the ideal position I want to achieve with my tool placement onto the steering shaft bolt. Notice the bar has given us the leverage that's required. So now what I want to do is I just want to push forward on this bar to release the nut. So since I have the camera in my hand, it's going to require two hands to ratchet that bolt out of the shaft. But you have gotten the idea of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so now I have released the bolt. 
Now what I want to do is I want to completely remove it from the shaft. Then we will return to our main working area to slide the shaft off of the steering gearbox using this pry bar right here. Just want to place it between. Okay, so you will have to use a rubber mallet or some form of hammer to tap here lightly to drift this shaft back. Then you're gonna have to take your arm and just wiggle it off like that. Just gonna sit it to the side. Now we're gonna proceed to removing these four bolts. But first, we have to remember to remove our power steering line. And remember, this is gonna require a line wrench a combination wrench because I have a lot of Guyanese people that hang around me and what they have to have it to do is they normally steal your stuff they're very nice at doing it but most of the time you're gonna be successful we using a combination wrench like I just did and always remember to keep your friends and family away from your tools because these are things people like to steal and sell them for pocket change most people don't have value for tools because they don't have the brain to fix anything. Kind of remind you that there are animals. All right, so this large fitting is a 17 millimeter and the small one is a 14 millimeter. You're gonna have to remember to place a catch can down here for catching the oil. 